All right, so if you guys want to learn how to uh, make this wool blanket shirt, uh, indoor parka, whatever you want to call it, go ahead and stay tuned and you'll see how it's done. How's it going guys? So today, what I wanted to do um, was go ahead and create a wool blanket shirt. Um, we've seen them all over YouTube, especially in the Bushcraft uh, channels. Primal Outdoors, he wears a couple of them. And he actually makes them himself. So I was kind of inspired by that, and especially because I don't want to spend, uh, you know, 200 or 300 dollars, whatever it is. So I got this blanket a couple years back and uh, never really used it too much. Dixon kind of took it over, but doesn't use it anymore. So what I'm gonna do is this is one of my favorite hoodies. You guys see me wear it all the time in most of my videos. Um, I got it on YouTube and decided to watch some videos on how to uh, make it and found the templates for it. And it's actually not really not that difficult. So today we are gonna Go ahead and attempt to make uh, one of these wool blanket hoodies. All right, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is um, find the center, and all I have to do for that is uh, I got some sidewalk chalk because I'm four years old, and that works. So what I'm going to do: take this blanket, fold it in half again, and actually, I guess I should mention. Um, I did, this blanket is actually folded in half, okay? So I took it, folded it in half like this, and what you'll see is I'm gonna lay out my hoodie, uh, my template, and it's gonna create a pattern. And that way I don't have to, you know, use the pattern twice, I can just cut it out once. It's already folded and creates two sides. Mark your center lines here. Now that we have that done, lay it back out. Then you just go ahead and take your favorite hoodie, indoor jacket, whatever you want to use, fold it in half. It doesn't have, obviously have to be exact, but you know, try to do it as close as possible. So that looks good to me. It's a halfway point for the hoodie. Flatten everything out. Now I'm going to pull my neck up just a bit. So you take the arm, and obviously it's cut at a downward slope like this. So I don't want to create too many seams. So I want this sleeve to be up here. So to do that, you just kind of take it, move it where you want, and this pinch is called the dart so you measure how much you take up here and you extend it on the, the sleeves I'm not too worried about the sleeves because they actually fit really nice I was gonna leave a couple inches anyways so this is flattened out this is flattened out we're not gonna worry about the hood right now because we're gonna take a piece out of this section and create the hood okay so at this point once you have it centered you know, and you got the arms where you kind of want it, with creating the dart, and that you make sure you have an ex excess length. Um, you're gonna go ahead and trace it out. And what, what you want to do is it leave probably about a quarter inch to a half inch extra of material on the wool. Um, so that way, when you, it gives you basically room to sew it up and not cinch it in even tighter. So I've never really done anything like this. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, I'll take you along for the whole process, and um, hopefully, you guys will be able to make one yourself if you want. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start tracing everything out. And like I said, you want to be able to make sure that you have about a half inch. I'm just going to eyeball it. But that's just because I don't want to get a ruler out.
So you can see here that I have my, my line drawn out. And at the very end, you can see that I, I, I'm taking it all the way down. So the reason why I have gone ahead and just drawn a straight line all the way down to the end of the material is because I actually want the, the hoodie to go past my waist and kind of down by mid-thigh, just above the knees. This should be long enough to be able to do that. As you guys can tell, I'm being extremely precise with my measurements of the half inch. Alright, so here's the section that I just got done cutting out. And I'm actually going to use this to create my hood. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and put this aside, go ahead cut out this other section, and then I'll show you how I cut out the neck hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pin this up real quick, um, so that way before I sew it, I can kind of do a test run. Okay, so what you do to create the neck hole, you're going to take a paper plate, Put fold it in half as best as you can. The halfway mark there. Fold it into itself again so you make it a quarter. You just want those nice lines. So now that you use this halfway mark line here, line it up, flatten it out as best as you can. Lined up. You just go ahead and trace out the plate, the template here. And I am also going to, I can already see my center line here. I'm also going to go ahead and roughly do a, oh, probably four inch center slice, create the nice flap, open flap there. Now I'm only going to cut this front out in this section. The back side here, I'm going to leave solid because I'm going to be attaching my hood. Alright, so just got done cutting it out, and I'm going to go ahead and try it on for the first time. Hopefully it fits. Okay, so here's here's what it looks like. Um, it's going to sit up more like this. I'll have some nice rope tied in here, but I'm going to have my hood come down to these two points. So it's going to be a nice big full enclosed hood. Uh, I'm actually pretty excited and happy with how this turned out. So all I'm gonna do is sew this up, and then we're gonna go ahead and create the hood. Okay, so now that I got to the point of creating the hood, um, I'm gonna go ahead and have Cheyenne take over. Trust me, it's gonna end up being a lot better. Um, she does this stuff uh, for a hobby and is really good at it. So what you'll be watching next is her creating the hood. We could do it one of two ways. We could have, just take this like this, Sew it down this curve, have that be the top of your head. And or oh, and have, the stripe at the bottom. have the stripe at the bottom around yeah. your neck. There you go, that's cool. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> that tastes like lucky charms. <laughs> what the hell did you put in it? It's coffee, mate. No no no. Hang on. <laughs> that was full on like lucky charms. Okay, so I got some tea from Cheyenne, which is good, you know, caffeine, God bless you. But I just went to go take a sip. All she had was the Coffee Mate French Vanilla. So I took a sip. 
and I instantly became diabetic. Uh, and it also tastes like Lucky Charms. <laughs> so, I don't know if it's a little joke Cheers. because I'm Irish or what, but yeah, I'm now diabetic. So this is great. I'm not making fun of diabetic people either. My mom's been diabetic since she was five. So I, I get the whole struggle. It's not good at all, but seriously, this is pretty interesting. It tastes like Lucky Charms. All right, back to crafting. All right, so you've got your two pieces of fabric. You've got the pattern roughly matched up. It's not super important. Um, what I like to do is every time I make a hood, I always make sure that there is extra room on both sides because you might cut it out and then get it on and realize, oh my gosh, it's way too long, or oh my gosh, that's way too short, and then you've ruined a piece of fabric, you can't use it anymore. So I'm gonna start way up here and just sort of draw a rough line here and then curve it down the back. So, what do you know about hand sewing? Enough to get in trouble. Okay, so <clears throat> pretty much I broke it. the sewing machine is uh, not working out. So we're gonna go ahead and hand sew it. So I'll just kind of go ahead and do a time lapse, I guess, of us sewing. I'm assuming most people that are gonna be making this might not have a sewing machine anyways. So we'll just do it the old fashioned way and do it by hand. So this yarn that I have, which is a, it's a wool blend yarn that I use for knitting my scarves and whatnot, but it's really thick. So since the machine wasn't working for us today, I ended up um, sewing it by hand, but I was able to use this yarn. And so I've done both sides already and have test fit it and it fits nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach the hood uh, next, and then I'll show you guys where I attach the pocket on the front. Definitely an oversized hood, um, like a tremendously <laughs> oversized, <laughs> but I want it that way just because that way I can bundle it all up, stay nice and warm. So I just got done sewing the hood on. Um, I'm really happy with how it's turned out so far. Sleeves are long enough for me. The sides, I still have a slit in it for when I sit. So this is the length of it. Comes down just above my knees and about mid thigh. Have the slits in there. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and attach the front pocket. Um, but that's after I fix the Obi-Wan Kenobi hood. What I'm gonna do to fix this is basically just start cutting a small triangle out about right here to relieve some of that uh, forward excess fabric. All right, so what's next and the final piece is my pocket. I've already put it on and crossed my arms and laid it down and I want the end of the pocket to be right at this line. So we'll center it up about from the knuckles in. You can tell it's all, you know, precise uh, measurements here. Once I get this sewn on, I'll go ahead and show you guys the final product. All right, well, here it is, guys. Got the nice pocket for the front. Pulled out on the sides. Perfect conditions right now because it's definitely snowing. So, as you can tell, the, the hood is definitely still oversized. We'll still probably be trimming some of this hood. But, for what it is right now, really happy with it. It's gonna keep me nice and warm. It probably took, I don't know, four or five hours worth of sewing and work. But, it was a $20 blanket that I bought a few years ago and now it is one of my camping shirts that'll keep me nice and warm. Anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, good luck with making one if you decide to, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.